we're gonna just sit here for a few minutes as we wait for people to start filling in, but we'll be getting started at 9.45. Um, that will be some introductions and you can get going. Thanks for joining us today if you're, if you're sitting here in the waiting room. Hi everyone, nice to have you. Hi Derek. Hi Sabira. <laughs> Thank you. 
to Reaper's webinar. Uh, we're so excited to have you here today. My name is Derek Schilling. Um, I'm one of the marketing team here at Reaply, um, putting this production together for you. We're joined today um, by Sabir Lathani, Director of Product at Reaply, to talk about our new homepage and how you can leverage it to get the most out of Reaply. Um, so before we jump in and get started, um, I just want to mention that we have a live chat to the side that you should be able to interact with. Um, I'll be in there watching for questions that we'll get to at the end. Um, there are some interactive elements to this, this webinar, so Sabira will cover those in just a second. Um, and then we also have some of our, our Reaply team members in the live chat as well, as well as um, some sales team members uh, ready to go. If at any point during this conversation you feel inclined to reach out to a Reaply team member, uh, we want you to feel empowered to do so. So, without further ado, um, I'd like to pass it over to Sabira uh, to kick us off. How are you doing, Sabira? I'm good. Thanks, Derek, for the intro and for the, the waiting room. I was comfortable with the silence. And I will be for the rest of the hour <laughs> as I talk through the screen. But welcome, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Sabira. Um, I am on the product team here at Team Reapley, and I have been with the company for over two and a half years and have spent the last 10 years of my career in circular economy. Uh, it all started with trash, and now I'm here doing very cool things, um, and so I'm excited to talk to you about our product and how it can help you unlock reuse as an opportunity to meet your sustainability goals and potentially even drive revenue or cost savings. So we have a lot to cover today. I'm very glad that you're here for the ride and we'll get started. And as Derek mentioned, please ask questions. Derek, if there's anything urgent that I can answer immediately, feel free to interrupt and we will also have a Q&A session at the end. So as we kick it off, before I even tell you about the agenda, we just like you to think about our assets or items or resources, things that your organization have purchased, how many of those items are sitting idle in your organization not being used? And I would love for you to just think about the why. What are some of the reasons that prevent you from maximizing the utility um, for your items? And we'll be covering a lot of this content as we go through today, but just a little seed for something for you to noodle on. So today we'll be covering, I'll do a little bit of intro to Reapley, our company, our products, and then I'll give you a little bit of the tour of our product and particularly our homepage, which we recently redesigned, so we're very excited about that. And then we'll connect those dots to how our products will help you unlock reuse and value for items that you've already purchased in your organization and might be sitting idle. So we got a lot to cover. There will be some polling and mentimetering, so just have your phones ready or your, you be, be ready to contribute. And here it is, I <laughs> primed you just, just at the right time. So we'd love for you to go to menti.com, enter this code and Derek will send that in the chat as well. And we want to know, before we tell us about, tell you about us, we want to know who you are. So the question that you have here is, who are you in terms of your context for Reaply? Do you manage resources? Are you looking at reusing at scale within your organization? Might you be a sustainability professional? Or are you brand new to the circular economy and totally or totally other? I put other for myself because I'm a Team Reaply employee, but would love to see and hear who you are so we can also help cater the conversation here a little bit. I'll give it a couple of seconds. I do love the live situation here, so let's get some participation. Nice, some sustainability professionals. Some folks who manage resources, that's awesome. Ooh, a lot of sustainability professionals, interesting. Wow.
This is great. Cool. So we have a, a good number of sustainability professionals, a little bit of other, a little bit of managed resources. So I think we'll cover um, hopefully content that is relevant to you all. And the next question before we get into the content of the presentation is, tell us if you've had any experience with the Reaply platform at all. Are you a customer and use the product heavily? Do you, have you gotten a demo from one of our team members or clicked around on the internet and learned a little bit more about us or are you brand new? Ooh, we have a couple of customers. And we're very excited for everybody who's brand new because we get to tell you who we are. Great. Nice, nice. Cool. All right, so mostly brand new folks, and that's perfectly fine. We have a little bit of something for everybody, so that's great. And I'm glad to see some of y'all have also experienced a demo. That's great. All right, thank you so much. So that'll help the context going forward. So we're Team Reaply. We're on a mission to build a community where every workplace resource finds its next use. What does that mean? That means every item that you've purchased, how can we identify how to maximize the utility of those items and make sure that whatever decisions you're making are the best decisions possible. So we're a few years old, we're founded in 2016 and we're still a young startup, but um, one thing I wanted to point out is that we have a good number of ecosystem partners that we work with. So we believe that circular economy and reuse is not possible alone. So we work with a large number of organizations to bring what I'm gonna show you to life. And so as you told us that you're, most of you are new to Reebly, we'll tell you a little bit about the products as well. And I'll be showing you these, the, these uh, areas of the product, so don't fret, we'll give you the real behind the scenes look as well. So we have our first product, which is Circulate Internal. This was actually um, the use case upon which our organization was founded. And, the pain point that we heard from companies and organizations and universities was, hey, we have a bunch of stuff. We know other people in our organization can use it. How do we do that without spreadsheets or without listers? Is there like a better way to track all the exchanging that is happening? Can we report it? We're gonna have to report sustainability metrics. How does reuse fall in line with that? Can we make some revenue off of some of the surplus that um, we have or avoid purchasing new, especially with inside of our organization if we have resources already. So we launched um, our internal product first, which provides sellers and buyers within an organization an opportunity to identify the surplus that they have and then connect via marketplace kind of tools to uh, facilitate exchanges, either peers to peers, so colleagues, employees, even college students, faculty, and or it could be that a member of the organization on behalf of, on behalf of the organization is listing surplus for other employees, teams, departments, campuses to be able to view, connect with the person on the selling side, and then actually exchange. And this is really important because a lot of times large organizations don't have that kind of connectivity between teams, departments, and geographic places in the world. So this was an opportunity, a digital hub, to easily uh, bring your resources to life and then be able to act on them within the proverbial four walls of your organization. We built upon that and expanded on that by adding on what we've called the preferred network. And what the preferred network does is gives you the ability to have total control over sharing your surplus with external parties. So the way this works is if you have an existing list of nonprofits that you work with, vendor partners, buyers, who you typically sell to, you can um, have them join the Reaply platform as their own organization. And we set them up and configure your organization in a way that you can control what items they see, 
they can exchange, they can talk to you about those items, see if they're interested, and which ones you don't want them to see. What's even greater about this preferred network is that, as I mentioned at the top, Reebly is working with other partners, um, and this is an example of that. So we work with <clears throat> nonprofit organizations, local small businesses, to bring them to the table, and if you so choose and you want them uh, you want to amplify or you want to find demand for those surplus items that you're looking to avoid sending to landfill, but you want to put them to use in a great way outside of your organization, you can have control in that demand even beyond what your, um, your existing network is today. And we know that all of that is kind of impossible with real life logistics and boots on the ground, circular economy and exchanging uh, uh, items and resources is not possible with the, without the actual movement of things from point A to point B. And so Reapley launched services to be able to help you create data about your items, move things from point A to point B, store items, and potentially even refurbish and remanufacture your items. So this is something that we've introduced and I'll touch upon this in a second. I'll just take a sip of water. So what does this all mean actually? Reebly can help you put your idle items to work by helping you know what you have, use what you have internal to your organization, and then sell or donate what you don't need. And we provide the services to support that across the board. So I talked a little bit more about use what you have and sell or donate what you don't need. And in order to support that, you really need to know what you have. And we're hint, hint, going to be launching a product around helping organizations track and manage their inventory at scale so that they can better use what they have and sell or donate what they don't need. So we're really thinking about the entire experience for an organization like yours or companies like yours to be able to quickly get things identified and then put them to work in a better way with total control and even live data and information about the transactions. So that's where we are today in terms of Team Reapley. I also wanted to give you kind of a sense of where we think we're going. We put together this, uh, I guess, slide and model to identify and show who in the circular economy Reapley wants to serve and collaborate with in order to make the maximum use of items possible. And so what I've kind of talked to you about already is that first owner, the person or organization who buys a thousand chairs or 10,000 laptops for their employees. And I talked to you about the internal reuser, somebody who could potentially need one of those laptops or hundreds of those laptops within your own organization and the external buyer or receiver who also has a need for those items but doesn't really have visibility into that supply unless provided a secure and trusted connection to your organization, to that first owner. Oh, we jumped ahead. But... In addition to that, we also want to work with and serve, and we do currently work with service providers to help make all of this possible. So I kind of mentioned that as well. And we also see manufacturers starting to play a role in, um, in the circular economy in a way that they can help provide data around the products that they already have put out into the marketplace. And they also could leverage data around how many of their items are out there in the world and is there opportunity to offer take back programs and certified reuse uh, products for their customers. So that's a little bit in the future. And we've also worked with some sponsor organizations who are seeking to jumpstart circularity in their local region or where their organizations operate. And so they might not themselves be a player in exchanging or owning items, but they want to subsidize 
the use of this tech kind of technology to unlock the connections between large organizations, nonprofits, hospital, government organizations, all within an area. So we've seen interest for, on this from different cities, as well as large enterprises who see the opportunity of, um, of circular economy and want to be at the forefront of that conversation. So taking a little bit of a step back, and before we get into the product, I want to take you back about six months ago. So we know that we're kind of still early days in the circular economy and in the adoption of technology to help unlock reuse. And so we want to make sure that we're focusing on these first use cases and making that experience really easy so that you can avoid purchasing new or double purchasing or throwing things out unnecessarily. So we asked ourselves and the objective we set for ourselves is how do we get our users to experience the value of reuse faster? And we wanted to make sure that we actually get them to that point of value so that we can reuse more uh, and avoid all of those unnecessary spends. So what we did in that journey, which was a very fun one, um, is talk to our customers. But before we talk to, tell, before I tell you about them, I would love to hear from y'all. What are the challenges you experience when thinking about reuse and particularly reuse at scale? So let's go back to the Mentimeter. And I know, I know sustainability is hard and so is reuse. Um, but so curious to hear what kind of things have you experienced with reuse at scale, particularly challenges? I'll give you all a couple of seconds to respond, but would love to see some participation. Anybody? Nothing, it's just really, really tough. It's a word cloud situation, so we'll be able to see. Mm -hmm. Transportation, storage, yeah, convenient returns. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Prepping items for reuse, yep, logistics. Return on investment, knowing the opportunity, yeah, low adoption rates. Wow, these are great, material value. Storage and transportation at the top, huh? Discovery, contacts, connections. Laziness, yeah, laziness, that's, I feel that. I'm furnishing an apartment um, for the first time in a long time um, and really going through the journey of Facebook marketplacing everywhere around me and the laziness can get to you. I feel that. Access, volume, mm -hmm. storage, lack of storage, yep. Finding items, repair. These are great. Thank you guys so much. <clears throat> so here's what <clears throat> our customers told us, which is actually really in line with what we saw here on the screen. So we put out a survey to some of our customers um, la in the middle of last year. So if you got that survey, thank you so much for participating and responding. And 36% of the respondents said that they don't list items on Reebly because they have nowhere to store the items. And 21% said that they don't know how to coordinate the logistics of the exchange. Um, so storage, logistics, and coordination, definitely a big pain point. Time and effort to create listings. So this is more specifically not about reuse at scale, but in our product and our platform. And a lot of our respondents said they don't have time to create listings, right? It's not necessarily in their job description or you know, they're taking on extra responsibilities or it takes work to actually come up with the data to create the listings and, and find the right information. Um, some of which y'all mentioned on the previous slide as well. And particularly we had a couple of fields that users said they, they found hard for them to fill out uh, on Reaply. And then also we heard from customers more qualitatively is there's kind of a confusing buying experience. So, a lot of times 
when a user was joining a new newish organization, they were logging in for the first time and kind of finding an empty page and not sure what action to take. And that left them kind of feeling like, so what's Reaply about? And so we wanted to take action on all of what we heard. And here's how we responded. So I mentioned our services earlier in the conversation. Reaply offers on-site services and support and now also can support with large scale storage, logistics, decommission, space refreshes, item remanufacturing, right? And this again, like I mentioned, it doesn't, it doesn't not just Reaply, it takes a network of organizations to deliver this. We also made changes to our product for the seller and looking at time to create listings. So when we get into the product, I'll give you a little bit of a tour of some of these um, features, but one of the changes that we made is we, <laughs> if you select a specific few categories, we're testing out what if Reaply suggests the wait for you so you don't have to Google it yourself and do the work for that yourself and you know, figuring out what other fields we can do that for. We also um, released the ability to leverage most recent categories so you're avoiding typing things over and over again and automatically saving, as, saving drafts and we, we have more work to do there, but those were some of the changes that we made late last year. And then on the buying experience side, we redid the homepage, which is very much different experience now, if you know the before and after, and I'll give you a, a peek of that. We also um, gave more information to the buyer, so adding an explicit condition field helps. Um, and then the ability to buy now is something that we're in beta in right now. Previously, we have we have only had an offer system. So what we're going to do today is basically double click on that homepage redesign, and I can help kind of give you a sense of what happened behind the scenes and why we made some of the decisions that we made and how that connects to driving value and dollars from reuse. So I'm excited about that. So this was the before. Um, so take a look at it just notice your feelings as a good yoga instructor might guide you to think and, and sense see how you feel give it a critique have your thoughts i'm sure the youtube chat is blasting off with hmm there's some things that are wrong and there is a definitely a lot of opportunity here for us to to redo this and relook at this so I'll tell you some of the problems that we uncovered when we were learning more about this. <clears throat> so one was that it was unclear. There's some empty states, not a lot of co co color, and not sure what to do when you get there. So a little bit bland and a little bit vague. And we also heard that the listings themselves were not so relevant to me or have to do a lot of scrolling or searching to find what I'm looking for and doesn't really feel personal. And then it also, we also heard from our customers, both from end users and from admins of our organizations that there's no connection between the actions of the end users. So creating listings and making offers and completing exchanges to the impact that the organization is having to, and, and the, the impact that the person is having. And so that's what we sought to solve. And so in redesigning the homepage, we sought to create a more engaging and relevant experience to connect the dots to Reaply's value to both, for both the supply side and the demand side faster, and then motivate users to act because climate change is upon us and circular economy is a really massive opportunity to avoid purchasing new and eventually avoid the extraction of raw material, which is really what we're what we're seeking to achieve. So now we'll kick it off and, and head into the home page. This is the preview of what it looks like. It's way better. We're very excited, but happy to hear your feedback as well and thoughts as to is it actually better. And I'll take you through um, the different areas of the platform and I'll also poke around into other areas as well besides the home page. So feel free to follow along. And as you follow along, 
tell us what's exciting to you about the homepage. What do you wish you could see on the homepage? Would this be relevant to you in your organization? <clears throat> so I will be, I have my apps, uh, my tabs die because otherwise I spend too much energy with a lot of tabs open. So here we go. We're in the homepage now in Reebley University. So this is, this is all of the listings in our organization. It's very scrollable and easily navigatable and love that color. But how do listings actually get here? We'll zoom out, we'll take a pause for a second. And yes, we'll get to the buyer side, that buyer experience, but how do listings actually get here? So you're able to create a listing I'm going to resume my last saved draft because I had something ready for y'all. What you're able to do at the at any user in your organization that you would permit into Reebly would be able to create this listing. And I identified, I have a one of these chairs that I don't need anymore. I would never give such a nice chair up, but maybe I'm, I'm ready for a new one or my organization's ready for a new one and I don't need this anymore. So, I can create a listing, add photos, add the category, which is important. We'll come back to that. I can add the condition, whether or not this has an asset tag. We know some organizations tag their items. Add a description and any tags, which is really helpful at the organization level. There's different ways that you like to categorize stuff. The pickup location which is really um, great and configurable for organizations. So you can choose how this looks for your, um, for your company, for your nonprofit, for your university, for your lab. This is something that we configure so that the users can see familiar locations and landmarks to set the, where the pickup and where the item is. You're able to set a price so as I was mentioning in our internal product, we see organizations both list items for free, but they also um, can add prices for the unit and accept payment as well on the platform. You can do this internally. You can ac accept payments externally as well. This is really important because if you're seeking to share your listings externally, this is an opportunity for you to drive revenue for your organization on surplus that might have gone to landfill. Um, you can quickly collaborate with the demand side without sending emails, without visits on site, um, without having to back and forth over phone call. So really um, having the opportunity to capture, recapture some of the value that you've already spent by putting a price on the item. If you have it listed for free, either you're providing the benefit to your own organization by avoiding purchasing new or double purchasing, and or you're providing the benefit to another organization, if you're sharing it externally, to reap the, the benefit of use of that item for free. So helping external organizations out, so like nonprofits that you might work with. There's also, you can have a quantity. In my team, we happen to have 12 of these, so I'm listing 12. And then this is where things get interesting about where you can have that total control. So this is a key differentiator for us, which is you as in your organization, as a person creating li of the listing, you can configure this section to give your, your organization and your employees or members the, the best amount of control possible. So does this listing only visible to my organization? Can I share it with my preferred network, which is my, uh, my, my group of nonprofits or my neighbors, my neighboring organizations? We also could share it to the Reapley network, which, is, which I was mentioning, our ecosystem of partners that we can help bring to the table to amplify that demand in case you're not able to find demand for those items so that we get that higher level of circularity and velocity. These two um, also help you generate that potential revenue or um, cost savings by uh, 
by either putting a price out or helping organizations um, purchase at a lower cost than they would otherwise. Oh, I think because my draft got refreshed, you can't see the suggested weight here, but for a few categories like chairs, when we select this the first time, it's because I, I prepped for this webinar that it's not showing you anymore, but this is actually a, a suggested weight. So I did not enter this weight. Reebly told me that it's likely that your chair is about this weight. And we hope to evolve this kind of suggestion so that the listing owner has to do much less work to get this data created. So this is how listings get created, how the visibility into what you have is brought to life so that others in your organization, either internally or externally, can actually browse what's available. So this is, this is the new homepage, welcome. We're excited to have it. So I'll talk through some of the feeds and then we'll go through some of the other features and areas of the product. So this is recently viewed, so personalized to me, things that I've recently clicked. So you can see I'm interested in both furniture items, something cool and unique like this conference table, which feels like double reuse here, that's very cool. And um, as well as building materials because that might be part of my job description. I also have listings that are new in my interest. So what we do at the beginning of our, uh, our journey with our users, something else that we recently released is this refreshed onboarding flow, is we capture the interest of the end users so that we can curate that homepage experience to be what is relevant to the end user. So these are the categories. Normally I would just select fun, but today, you know, for this webinar, I'm interested in all these other materials and, and interests. And this is something that is not, you know, set in stone. So you're able to edit your interests over time. And really what we seek to do and involve in the future is leverage more data and information that the user provides us in order to make this, um, this interest feed more relevant and and personalized to the user, as well as to provide suggestions as to what might be interesting to them to purchase and take action on immediately, so that, again, we get that velocity and opportunity for reuse. I can explore categories. I love those fun animations bringing our page to life, which is great. And popular listings, what other people are looking at, so I can say, yeah, uh, maybe I should want that too, or it might be relevant to me. And uh, this is, it feels more like an e-commerce experience. So we also want um, reuse to feel familiar and not like a huge um, uh, departing from other uh, shopping or utility maximization of items in other contexts, right? So when you're looking for an item, it would be great for this experience to feel familiar to that instead of emails or listers. Carbon avoiders, this is great because we have some reporting around carbon. So actually every exchange and every opportunity to avoid buying new or avoid going to landfill would be carbon avoiders. We have um, data around different, uh, different categories and their carbon emission factors. So this helps users kind of see like, oh, this would be helpful if I actually exchange on this item. And I'll actually go back up here to the top and we'll connect the dots to some other things. So I'll connect the dots to the reporting here. So as I was saying about the carbon reporting, we have reports that are available. And here at this top bar, which is new for us, is my organization's impact. How much weight is diverted? and how much value is recaptured. So this at like bang at the top of the homepage is by taking XYZ action, hey, we're all in this together and we're making progress towards our sustainability goals that we set. And um, we'll actually go to the reports themselves, which we have, I'll actually start with our weight diverted report. 
So this is a cumulative real-time report of as transactions are happening on platform, this number continues to go up, right? And you get to see um, the different date ranges and you're able to adjust accordingly. Okay, so let's say from 2021, and see the time here. So this is telling you, this is doing, normally what we've seen organizations tell us is they're doing sustainability reporting at a, at a set period uh, when they have to report out. But this gives you the power at your fingertips to have this information at any time and as soon as, as transactions are happening and reuse is happening. The other interesting report is the value available and recaptured. So what this report is telling you is everything that's listed on Reaply within your organization today, what the opportunity for reuse is, right? What's the value of the chairs that you've listed, the laptops, the bricks? What, what is the potential opportunity so that it can be motivated to get some of that moving and circulated so that I can see how much is actually recaptured and recaptured here is that the value that's associated, the market value that you put with the listing, connecting that to um, either cost avoided uh, because you've not purchased new or revenue from a sale to be able to uh, get that, that dollar number up and justify the reuse. Show you our embodied carbon report as well. So for those who have to do sustainability reporting and are tracking towards your goals, this is another real-time report that we have, which uses over, uh, different um, factors for the different categories. It's at the category level to be able to report on the estimated carbon avoided by reusing items. So this is another huge value driver for organizations to be able to report on this and have this information at their fingertips. Now, heading back to the home page, the other thing I kind of wanted to call out was this new call to action section, which is giving the user the heads up of like, what should I do? So when you see the before of our home page, this was not so obvious. So we wanted to do is say, any user coming to the platform, bam, what action should I take and why? And this gives you kind of the heads up about that, as well as we have messaging and notifications to be able to help remind the end users to come back to the platform and take that action. So we're also able to, in our Exchange Center, help users on both sides of the transaction, either if you're selling, to manage the offers that they are submitting, I'm oh, sorry, as they're selling the offers that they're receiving and if you're buying the offers that you're submitting. Um, so this gives you a chance to take a look at your history and stay on top of all of your circular activity, your reuse activity and the ability to, the, to view the orders and kind of have a running history and track of what has happened, which is really great. A lot of organizations don't necessarily have that historical data available to them. So I'm gonna head back to the deck here. Hopefully y'all were following around. I did also want to, I see we have about 15 minutes left. I'll give you a quick tour of one more feature that we, um, that we are in now in beta by now. And I would just like you to think about how this feature might make your organization, your, your experience with Reaply better if you're a customer and why this, might, this feature might not work for you in your organization. Definitely leave it in the chat. Um, we'll go, let's change my organization here. And so this is this feature as I was showing, um, Actually, I don't know if I actually did a good job of showing you what happens after you create you, your listing is created and you have the home page. So um, that is a buy now listing. And let's see. The buyer would be able to make an offer 
this leads to a conversation and the ability for the seller to accept. And as I just clicked to here, the beta feature that we released is at the listing level, the seller can choose, is this listing gonna be a buy now listing or an offer listing? So giving that flexibility to the seller to choose what they want to do. Uh, and in this case, as the buyer of this, I might be able to buy now because the seller didn't wanna accept offers, no discussion necessary, let's just transact. So I can put in my zip code. And this organization is accepting payments on platform. We're integrated with Stripe, so it's pretty secure. And uh, I'm able to complete the transaction directly online without having to talk to or doing a back and forth on offers with the seller. And I can mark the item received. So now the status of that order is completed. So this is a beta feature. I'm curious to hear y'all's opinions and feedback on it. We'd love to, we love to learn from our customers uh, in all cases, and we're a very uh, customer-facing product team, so we're constantly having conversations. We launched an inaugural customer advisory board that we're very, very grateful for our customers to participate in, and um, we're definitely very open to feedback, so would love to hear some of your thoughts as you watch me go through that. And now we're really at the end of our time together and happy to talk through any questions or feedback from the product tour that I gave you, the demo, as well as anything, any questions about Reaply, the company, and our products. Hi, Sabira. It's, uh, you're back with me. Um, and we do have a few questions. Uh, so if you can hear awesome. me all right, we'll dive right into them. Um, I can. And, and thanks for that, that great presentation. We're, we're excited about this new homepage and very happy to share it with um, customers and just interested parties alike. Um, if you have any questions during this portion, please leave them in the chat. I'm watching it. Um, and we have some, some Reaply team members on standby as well. If you'd like to schedule a demo, just go to reaply.com, hit that schedule a demo button in the top right and we'll get in touch with you as soon as possible. Um, and also please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to see more content like this. And, and some exciting new things to come from Reaply, like that buy now feature that, that Sabira previewed for you. So Sabira, the first uh, question I wanted to, or that we had in the chat that I wanted to bring towards you is, um, let's say we have a nonprofit organization that wants to, um, they want to post a listing looking for something or requesting something. Um, what, uh, what are we doing on the, on the platform to make that happen? Yeah, we do, I would, we do have an, early and slash old experiment that we ran with requests um, where organizations or even internal to, to organizations, there's the ability to uh, ask for specific things. Um, so that is something that exists on the platform. I would say that has not been actually heavily used. And what we're looking to do is actually turn data that the, the demand side is giving us by either using search or clicking around and helping make that more visible to sellers. Um, there is also the ability to specifically create a request and ask for a specific thing. But what we have found and heard is that the, the probability that there is a match feels not necessarily high. Um, and so it's just something that we're exploring. So possible um, still on our roadmap to figure out how to improve. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity there to help supply meet demand and demand let supply know, what do I need? Could you also speak to a little bit more about how nonprofits in general can get, um, get engaged with Reaply um, beyond just the platform? Absolutely. So um, I would suggest that you reach out to our team and join the Reaply network. So what does that mean? You're, you would be able to view listings that supply side organizations are making available to that wider group of organizations in the Reaply network. So if you're looking for things, that's something that you can absolutely do right away for free. And you can have access to that kind of supply. We have workspace items, building materials, um, IT equipment. So there's a lot there that, that could hopefully serve a need 
If you're also looking to track your own items, if you have a large organization and you have a hint that the internal product might also be useful to you, um, that is something we've seen nonprofits do. So if you have a ton of organizations and a huge national footprint, you can help figure out where are all the assets that I've purchased nationally and facilitate that reuse instead of spending your precious budget dollars on buying new. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a really amazing feature. Um, we're going to jump into our next question, uh, which is someone's interested in knowing that the products that they're receiving are coming from a nearby region to reduce shipping and, and other expenses. Um, how are we helping accomplish this? Yeah, so the messaging, um, so you're able to filter uh, definitely on the browsing experience based on radius and location. So that's something that you as a buyer have total control over. Um, and we know that there is kind of a cost benefit analysis that needs to be done at an item level to understand, is it actually worth it for me to ship beyond XYZ miles? Um, that's something that I would say we would want to address in the future in the product is helping buyers and sellers make decisions about which transactions make the most sense from a carbon perspective. We're not there yet, um, but going back and forth and messaging with the seller gives you total control to make that decision. And the filters also help you um, understand what's local to you or not. Awesome. Yeah, and I know we're putting a big emphasis on on a movement called Circular Cities. Uh, so we're we're helping to facilitate local exchanges as much as possible um, and reduce those those shipping expenses and and any other expenses associated with carbon shipping and and all things of that sort. Um, moving on to the uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, Jeff. I just wanted to react to something you said about Circular Cities. If you're in a city and you participate in your local government, definitely get them thinking about what they can do to jumpstart circularity in your area. Because I kind of hinted at before, these types of exchanges are possible when you have those large networks. And so what we're seeing is cities saying, yeah, I'm going to help facilitate these kinds of transactions. For example, we'll focus on a particular material type, building materials in my city. I might care about making sure they're not going to landfill. So put together a program around facilitating these types of transactions digitally and providing the physical infrastructure to support that storage and logistics kind of challenge that reuse runs into at scale. And so that's also an opportunity for you to get involved in your local city and nudge other organizations to also collectively sign up and figure out how we can make this happen locally because we do want transactions to stay local as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. The the less uh, carbon and expenses that we can help people achieve, the better. Um, exactly. So, so this next question, uh, it's how does the warehousing payment structure work? And and um, I'll kind of field that. I, I I think the best answer for that will not come from Sabira or I. Um, your best answer for that will come to talking uh, with our sales team and getting an answer that's that's specific to to your scenario. Um, but the second part of that question is, is there information on the average length of time building materials would take to be placed? Um, we don't have that today, although that is uh, a definitely data that we would look to provide um, to the sellers and the buyers. So um, thank you for bringing up that question, something that we, we know we need to work on. So if we fast forward to Reblee's product in a few months and years we're seeking, as I was also hinting at before, is leveraging data to make uh, the experience more personalized and get more recommendations in front of folks, right? Is that I can tell you that this, if I can tell you that this item is going to take a couple of weeks and you know to be patient or you know that you need to be more aggressive and getting the word out there or Reebly can help get more demand on the platform. So definitely uh, an opportunity for growth for us, but not today. Uh, it's coming essentially. Um, we're, we're, the more data that we can collect and, and provide, um, the better answers that we'll have to questions like this. Mm -hmm. um, next question is is kind of more specific. Who who could I speak to at Reaply regarding product rework items? Product rework meaning like reuse and remanufacture. I'm going to assume that as I answer that question. Um, 
I would say there's a couple of folks. We have we have a lot of different team members. So if you sign up for Reebly, um, I'll tell you a little bit about our structure. So we have our product team that will help not only with the, the digital product experience, but we work closely with our other teams to help make sure that the product and operations of reuse are possible. So those teams that help us do that are our ecosystems team who are identifying those local opportunities where there is the need to be able to repurpose, remanufacture, repair items. And we find that there is a bit of matchmaking that needs to happen there between the service provider um, and, and the, the organization that has supply. So we help facilitate that and get you the best solution. And our customer success team also supports throughout that entire process. So really we have a high touch um, experience um, so that that circularity and those opportunities are coming really easy to you. Yeah. So to, to, so, so, uh, condense that, um, you can reach out, uh, through that same schedule demo form. Um, and mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get to you, um, very quickly, um, through our ecosystem team. Um, and I, I just want to kind of emphasize as well that, um, Reaply is more than just a platform. We are working on building this, this larger community of reuse. And so everyone has this place in that community, as you saw in those earlier diagrams, that um, we want to make sure that everyone feels empowered to reuse within their organizations, with other organizations, and, and even able to re rework and remanufacture specific products. Um, it seems like we're nearing the end of time, um, and that's the end of our, our questions. Is there any, anything else you'd like to preview or touch on before we, we wrap up? No, I would just ask that... Um, Y'all reach out if reuse at scale is interesting to you. So as Derek mentioned, please um, take the opportunity to schedule a demo. We find that if you're the first owner of an item or an internal reuser, or external receiver, every organization has its weird nuances and culture, and that is great. And we want to be able to help meet you where you're at. Um, so having a demo and talking to one of our team members helps us um, serve you better. Uh, so that's kind of part one, so plus one to what you said, Derek. And then also I wanted to give you a little bit of a hint, as I mentioned earlier, that we are releasing um, a new product more around inventory management and knowing your supply, the surplus in your organization much better um, for, for a large organization who have a lot to track to help uh, unlock that reuse and that opportunity for internal and external exchanges. Um, so we'll be having a webinar in the upcoming weeks to launch that. We're very excited. Um, we believe that this will really help push the circular economy forward and take a big step for our product. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. And I would we, say we in question, conclusion, also. please sign up for Reebly and, uh, and help be part of the solution by creating listings, making offers, buying now, actually getting your hands dirty with the exchanges and or setting your organization up to be able to do that. Um, that's the that's the ask. And we're here, we're Reebly, we're seeking to build circularity for every business. So join us on that journey. Yeah, so we thank you. Uh, Sabir, I have one more question for you, but I do wanna thank everyone if they have to hop off, the, off this webinar. Um, mm -hmm. and to stay tuned for future ones. Um, but this last question is, do all the network users for an organization have access to each other as well, like a B2B model with the organizations involved? Um, the answer is kind of. It's a very uh, opt-in scenario because what we have noticed is many organizations want and need control for their um, business experience and their business rules. So some organizations prefer to share their listings and their surplus with a subset of organizations. That's their choice and that's the control that you get. But organizations that are willing to share with any other organization in the network and willing to view listings from any organization in the network, we also have that ability. So as I was showing you um, on the platform, this is the the place at the listing level where you have total control. So this Reebly network is the opt-in network where organizations can have B2B transactions with any other organization that has opted in. So we provide both that control and that extended network 
um, if depending on what your need is as a, as a supply or the the supply side organization. Yeah, and that's that's one of the most exciting new new things that we've come up with, uh, in my opinion, um, that's happening currently. And you can see our all of those um, opted in listings currently uh, from the Reblee.com homepage uh, to view all listings um, or browse listings from our top down menu. Uh, super exciting. Hopefully, you find something close to you that you can take and turn into something beautiful. Um, that's we just hit that two thirty mark. So I want to thank everyone again for for joining us today. Thank you, Sabira, for this this lovely presentation and for all the work that you've done to the platform. Um, and thank you all for, for paying attention today. We hope to see you again uh, in future webinars or uh, on the Reply platform. Thank you. Thanks, y'all.